My name is Sam Wagnin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning and today we're going to discuss self-harming, also known as Brexit and its aftermath. In clinical psychology the behavior is known as self-defeat, self-harm or self-destructiveness. In the annals of the European Union it is known simply as Brexit. On January 30th, 2020, following years of arduous negotiations, often bordering on extortion on both sides, the United Kingdom have exited the European Union. In 2016, in a referendum unwisely called by David Cameron, the Conservative Prime Minister at the time, about half of all Britons, 51% of the population, voted for this act of self-immolation, spurred by nationalist populism and anti-elitism. How did Britain fare in the wake of Brexit? Hard to tell. Global disruptions to supply chains, investments and consumption, owing to COVID-19, the wars in Ukraine and in Gaza, and climate change, these have utterly distorted the gathering of data and have rendered statistics doubtful, even more doubtful than before. In the United Kingdom, the economy grew by 4.1% in 2022. It succeeded to match European Union growth rates in 2023 and, and 2024, according to provisional figures. The Office for National Statistics chronicled a recovery from the pandemic by September 2023 economic activity was 1.5% higher than prior to the global cataclysm. And this kind of growth is comparable to France, considerably more than Germany's, and dismally lower than the likes of Japan, let alone the United States. The Brexit gamble did not pay off in terms of enhanced growth and foreign direct investment. The UK is still tethered to the continent, economically at least. The figures are profoundly misleading though. Inflation in the United Kingdom ratcheted up to around 10% in 2022. Exports to the European Union have declined, subjected as they are to new bureaucratic impediments and payments. Unencumbered by European Union red tape and veto power, the United Kingdom did sign bilateral trade agreements <clears throat> with Australia and the Trans-Pacific Partnership. But this is a far cry from the grandiose promises of the economically illiterate promoters of Brexit. Negotiations with the likes of Canada and India, far more relevant trade partners, seem to languish. A country's currency is the best gauge of its crowdsourced monetary, uh, fiscal and trade health. The British pound stood at 1.4 to the euro in 2015. It is now trading at 115. Enough said. Such precipitous decline is supposed to encourage exports, which it hasn't, and supposed to enhance domestic consumption, which it has, having rendered ever more expensive imports far less affordable. Migration was a main point of contention between the United Kingdom and the more lenient European Union. It is ironic, therefore, that migration actually surged and has reached new highs post-Brexit. According to the venerable newspaper Le Mans, the flow of incomers doubled after Brexit to 682,000 people between June 2022 and June 2023. To make matters worse, a net 330,000 qualified personnel abandoned the splendidly isolated isles, creating labor shortages and inflationary pressure on wages, especially at the high end. Newly instituted border controls between the United Kingdom and the European Union adversely affect both tourism and mobile workers, for example, in the critical finance industry. Short on friends in the continent, having negotiated Brexit in bad faith, the United Kingdom is turning even more 
emphatically to its former colony, also known as the United States. About three-fifths of Britons now regard Brexit to have been a disastrous mistake. Only 30% still support it. Even, if, even its most ardent proponents admit that the benefits of a manoeuvre will accrue only in the long run. But as Keynes said, in the long run, we're all dead. The European Union, in the meantime, has rid itself of an abusive and intractable partner, reminiscent of Hungary. It has been functioning more smoothly ever since the European Union, gradually reverting to its original charter as a free trade pact. The long-lost, unlamented United Kingdom, good riddance.